Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I've teamed up with Ewan to talk to you about the dumbest purchases we've made in our 20s. Hi guys, my name is Ewan. On my channel I talk about personal finance, investing and what makes successful people tick. And I'm very grateful to be given the opportunity to come on to Anna's channel today and talk about the dumbest purchases that I've made in my 20s. So I'll pass you back to Anna and we can get into it. Hopefully this will help you learn from our mistakes and although I'm technically still in my 20s, I am nearing the end of them. So I feel very wise and old and I'm going to share my wisdom with you. Before we begin, I just want to say make sure you are subscribed to both of our channels. We have a really exciting giveaway coming next week for you. So stay tuned for that and make sure you are subscribed to both of us. So the first dumbest purchase that I made in my 20s was probably buying a brand new car. I've mentioned this in one of my videos before, but as much as I loved my car and it was brilliant, it was brand new, it was mine, it worked really well, but I did buy it sort of straight from the dealership and it cost £12,000. I did get it on finance, it was over four years, but all that means is that I paid interest on it for four years. But had I invested that monthly payment for the car instead of paying off the car, I could have made a lot of money. So having a look at the compound interest calculator, if I assume my £500 deposit and then the £320 a month car payment I was making and put this into the calculator for the four years, I would have gained about £3,000 over those four years, assuming an 8% return. That's a lot of money, considering the fact that a lot of the money that I was spending that out of that £320 would have been interest and money that I'm never going to see again. So I guess my piece of advice there is just don't buy new cars. Don't get me wrong, buying an old one that you're constantly going to have to pay for in repairs is probably not a good idea either. But there'll be a good middle ground, you know, talk to your dads or your uncles and people who know about cars and make sure you find a good deal. So, the second one for me revolved around a holiday and it was that I bought a £1,000 trip to Egypt on the same day that unfortunately a terror attack happened. Although this is not my fault, I could have done the research because there was some civil unrest at that point and I didn't do it and it cost me at least £500. I did manage to turn it around a little bit because I used that £500 that we got refunded to go on another trip and we went around Europe for two weeks and it was very, very good. So the next one for me is a personal training course. Now, I really struggled with whether to put this in because I'm so embarrassed about it, but I want to be honest with you guys and keep it real so I've always been fairly into health and fitness at the moment you know over the last 12 months I've not really been going to the gym for various reasons that I won't go into now but prior to that I spent years at the gym and I was so into health and fitness and I thought I could make a career out of being a personal trainer because I loved fitness so much and I generally really like helping people you know that's why I started this channel I just enjoy helping people with things I'm good at however there is a reason that I hated science, any form of science, in school, you know? I just couldn't bring myself to do the training required to be a personal trainer. It was too sciencey, too much sort of biology and learning about things like that that I just had no interest in. And for me, I'm one of those people that if I'm not passionate about what I'm learning, I'm just not going to apply myself to it. And then life sort of got in the way and I didn't have time to do it and because I wasn't passionate about it I didn't prioritize it so as an example with this channel I do prioritize it because I'm passionate about finance but yeah the personal training course was just just a stupid mistake so it was an impulse buy so I would discourage you from making big purchases as an impulse so I wasted £1,800 on this course, don't make the same mistakes. <laughs> and I realised that this might not apply to everyone, you know, not everyone will go out and buy a personal training course. But the whole point is that it was something that on impulse I got really excited about and was like, oh my god, I'm going to do this, this personal training course is on half price, I'm going to buy it, I'm going to do this, it's going to be great, without really properly thinking it through. So whenever you find yourself in such a situation, just wait, you know, those offers, they'll come back eventually. And if you wait and you've really thought it through, then, you know, at least you'll know that it was a carefully considered purchase rather than just two grand that you've wasted away because of an impulse. Number four, 
is I bought fake Dr. Dre beats. So admittedly, I wasn't actually 20 when this happened, but I was around 17 or 18, and I had just got my first paycheck, and I was like, hmm, maybe I should buy some Dr. Dre beats off eBay for 250 pounds, and what did I get? I got fake ones and they broke after one week. This was an impulse buy and unfortunately it didn't end that well because they did break. So before buying something off eBay, just make sure you do your, your research and make sure that they are a good, trustworthy seller because it's very disappointing when it breaks after just one week. So the fifth thing on the list is expensive bags and clothes. Now, I've never been someone to buy designer handbags and designer clothes and things, but I have purchased the more sort of higher end things. And when I was younger, you know, things like DKNY, I would find impressive. And I saw this bag once from DKNY and it was on offer and it was like 300 pounds. And I was like, great, you know, this is really gonna impress people. I'm gonna have this fancy handbag and all this kind of stuff. And I freaking hated it. I barely wore it. I ended up selling it for not very much. And it was just so uncomfortable. I only got it because it was, it was on offer. My salary was a lot less back then and I didn't think about how practical it would be. It was like a really hard one that you I struggled to get things in and out of and yeah, it was just a bad decision. And there's been other times, you know, I had a coach purse for example, which it was about 150 pounds and then it got stolen and I was devastated. I mean, Thankfully, you know, people use my cards and stuff and thankfully the banks gave me my money back, but I lost the purse. It was 150 pounds that essentially just, like, does it really matter? Is anyone actually looking at your purse? Now I have a really cheap one that I got in Poland and I love it and I wouldn't be devastated if I lost it. Similar with clothes, again, I don't really buy designer stuff, but I used to think that buying clothes just because they were from like a certain brand was a good idea and the amount of times I spent money just because something was say from Topshop it's not like Topshop isn't better quality than somewhere a bit cheaper and the reality is that when I've been at work for example I actually get more compliments on work dresses that I've been gifted which are from much cheaper shops like freaking Sainsbury's um, than I do when I wear expensive ones. So it just shows that no one actually knows where your clothes are from. The chances are that people you know, people you work with, aren't gonna be like trying to figure out where your clothes are from or care where your clothes are from. Having said that, on the flip side of this, I do also regret spending so much money on cheap fast fashion. So I think that's just as bad as just spending money on brands because the amount of times I've purchased things just because they were cheap or because I felt like I just needed more clothes or I was bored and I would go on like ASOS and just order a bunch of crap. And again, I've spent so much money on things that I've never worn and things that fall apart after a couple uses. So I guess what I'm trying to say in this long ramble is I wish that I'd been spending money on good quality pieces that would last a long time. So even if they're on the more expensive side, just making sure that they're proper good quality and that they're gonna last a long time. So number six is get your travel money sorted before you go to the airport. So this is a mistake that I've probably made a few times and I still, I'm not very good at doing it, but you can now order currency online and get it delivered straight to your door. So if you're going on a holiday, just make sure you do that so that you can get your money and not have to worry about it and save a lot of cash that could be going towards you living when you're not on holiday or actually spending more when you're out there because you're on holiday might as well so the seventh thing on the list is expensive camera equipment now although i now make videos and i have an expensive camera there were times in my early 20s where i spent money on expensive camera equipment when i really didn't need it so as an example i purchased an expensive bulky big dslr camera to take photos with and I barely used it, it was so bulky. I took it on holiday thinking I'm gonna get all these great holiday pictures and stuff, but the reality was it was big, it took up loads of space, it was heavy, and I never ended up taking out with us when we were on holiday. So it was a complete waste of money. Again, I ended up selling it and essentially just made a huge loss on it when I barely used it. Another example is when I purchased a GoPro camera and again, thinking I was gonna take all this footage on holiday and all these cool things on like, 
roller coaster rides and swimming in the ocean and things like that but the reality was I took it out like once and a couple other times other people had GoPros or like waterproof cameras or whatever it was other times I just wasn't bothered I never found it very user friendly and it was so fiddly to get it in and out of the waterproof case I just couldn't be bothered so again wasted my money on the GoPro I did sell it I got like 90 pounds for it I think I've mentioned it in one of my other videos but I massively regret buying it what I'm trying to say is that unless you have a real need for expensive equipment don't bother buying it you know have a proper think maybe borrow something from someone who else who has it and then see whether you actually use it and like it before you spend your hard-earned cash on it as you can see we've both made some dumb purchases in our lives and for me I'm only 24 so there's still six years of me making dumb purchases but I'll be showing them on my channel so make sure you go check that out and thank you Anna for having me on your channel hopefully some of these will help you make better decisions in your 20s than we did thank you so much for appearing on the channel Ewan it's been a pleasure having you and thank you guys for watching and make sure to stay tuned for the giveaway next week bye